I'm Dr. Wynne Fitman, Professor of Plant Breeding and Genetics in the School of Agriculture at Western Illinois University. I direct the new and alternative crops research program here at Western, and I serve as the project director for the USDA NEFA Coordinated Agricultural Program Project called I Prefer. Over the last 20 years, I've investigated crops including common milkweed for the fiber and oil industry, niger seed for the bird seed industry, kufia for the soap and detergent industry, and finally, and most recently, field pennycress as a cash cover crop for the sustainable biofuel industry. Now, in a normal year, I would share my research with the public in a field day format where I invite fellow researchers, industry professionals, local producers to come see my research plots here at the farm. Under the current situation with COVID-19, this is just not possible. To help, I've put together a series of video clips to help explain the different aspects of my research. The first video clip will cover a quick introduction to pennycress and why we're so excited about working with this crop. I will also cover how we plant pennycress in the research plots. Video clip two will cover how I got started on researching pennycress. I will cover some of the initial pennycress collection trips, fall planting date studies, and most importantly, the impact of pennycress on the crop rotation with soybean. Video clip three will cover the past and present variety trials of the wild collected and breeding program varieties from around the country. Video clip four will cover the nitrogen trials and seeding rate experiments. Video five will cover the fungicide trials. Video six will cover the multi-state variety trials with the advanced breeding lines. And finally, video clip seven will cover the different methods we use to harvest pennycress in the research plots. I hope you enjoy the videos. This first video clip will cover an introduction to pennycress. Pennycress, or Thalaspi arvensi, is in the Brassicaceae family and is closely related to canola, camelina, and the laboratory plant Arabidopsis. Pennycress can grow uh, throughout the temperate regions of the world and is predominantly found in production fields or disturbed areas north of Arkansas in the United States. It has a diploid genome that's already been sequenced and has an 86% identity to Arabidopsis. This gives us a good idea of where genes are located in the Thalaspi genome. Other Excellent traits that pennycress has is extreme cold tolerance. We've collected pennycress as far north as northern Canada and Fairbanks, Alaska. It's got a relatively short life cycle. In the greenhouse, it can go from seed to seed in about 60 days. And in the natural populations, we've found that the seed has rich oil and proteins. Another trait that is critical for introducing a new crop is that it's not evasive. It's commonly found throughout production areas and it can be easily controlled. If we take a look at the photos on the slide, the upper right hand corner has a picture of a flowering stem with a classical penny shaped pods and gives you an idea of the size of the pods at maturity. At the lower left corner is a natural field found in Bloomington, Illinois, and that picture was taken about mid-April. And on the right hand bottom side is a large production field that was outside of Galesburg, Illinois, that's near dry down towards the end of May and ready for harvest. Pennycress is a fairly small seeded crop. It's about half the size of a rapeseed. Um, it's got about 34% oil and about 19% protein. In the central Midwest region of the United States, corn is typically planted in April and May and is harvested in October or November. The farm ground stays barren over the winter months until soybeans are planted in typically May or June. What we're proposing is introducing pennycress as a cover crop during those barren months without disrupting the corn and soybean rotation. Other crops like canola have just too long of a production cycle to fit in this narrow window. If we look at the map at the center of the slide, the dark green area represents about 80 million acres of the Midwest Corn Belt. 
this is the area that we're proposing to potentially grow pennycress in the off season instead of having bare ground. As you can imagine, that represents a fairly large area of the United States. When we begin to first commercialize pennycress, we're going to focus primarily in the central region of Illinois because that's the region that has the longest time between the corn and soybean planting and will be the easiest part to adapt pennycress. As commercialization progresses, we'll move farther north to adapt pennycress to the shorter season between corn and soybeans. Our target yields for pennycress will be about 2,000 pounds of seed per acre, which would equate to about 85 gallons of oil and 1,300 pounds of seed meal. Now, if we think about the 80 million acres being in the corn and soybean rotation, only about 40 million of those acres will be in the corn stage ready for pennycress planting. So only about 40 million acres would be accessible, but that still equates to about 3 billion gallons of oil without displacing any food crops. Now to review pennycress planting, pennycress is typically planted in the fall, typically after corn, sometime in October or November. We're finding the earlier you seed the pennycress, the better stand you'll have going into the winter. Pennycress has very strong winter survivability and does well under very harsh conditions of the winter, including freeze-thaw cycles. By the end of March, you should have large rosettes measuring anywhere from six to eight inches covering the ground. By early April, you should have your first flowers. And by the end of April, you should be in full bloom. Here's another picture of the WIU research plots in full bloom towards the end of April in Macomb, Illinois. And by the middle of May, flowering should be done and should be in full pod set and starting to begin the dry down process. Here's a picture towards the third week of May, getting ready for harvest. And then ultimately we should be harvesting by the third or fourth week of May. In a commercial setting, pennycress can be flown on or aerial seeded into standing corn or into corn that has just been harvested with a light tillage pass or vertical tillage pass uh, to help the seed get better soil contact. Pennycress is a natural nitrogen scavenger and does not require nitrogen in the fall, although we have seen some improved establishment with at least 50 pounds of nitrogen applied in the fall incorporated. Pennycrest should not be planted in fields that have been treated with certain herbicides which inhibit pennycress germination in the fall. By late May, the pennycrest should be ready for harvest, and here's a plot in Morton, Illinois, with a few weeds, but is ready to be harvested with a standard combine. No modifications are needed on a standard platform combine that's used for harvesting soybeans. If you're interested in learning more about pennycress, please watch the other video clips. To plant the research plots here at Western Illinois University, I like to follow soybeans just because of the ease of not having to deal with corn stubble. We use a Hagee 1200 cone planter that allows us to distribute seed over variable plot lengths. In this video, you're seeing us plant the variety trials, which are five feet wide, and 10 feet long. There is two feet after each plot before we release seed for the next plot. The rider on the back is watching for the stakes that are approaching and releases the seed into the plot and has to get the next seed pack loaded before we reach the next plot. We like to get the variety trials planted in late August or early September. If you notice in the background, the corn is at full maturity here and will be harvested soon. This next video is us planting the bulk pennycress plots. The cone planter can be set up to be a drill and allows us to plant pennycress over longer distances. The planter is set up to plant the seed fairly shallow at about an eighth of an inch with a press wheel firmly packing the soil over the seed. The entire research plots receive about 50 pounds of nitrogen of N, typically prilled urea that's incorporated prior to planting. We also add about 10 pounds of elemental sulfur to the mix over the entire plot area.
We found this helps establish the pennycrest plots in the fall and allows the rosettes to reach a, a mature size before heading into the winter months. I hope you found this video useful and please follow the other videos as you find out more about the research here at Western. For more information about Pennycrest and the new I Prefer project, you can follow us on Twitter and on YouTube. If you would like to comment on this video, please scan the following QR code to take a brief survey.